Welcome to part three of the Streamlit 101 series. In this part, you're going to learn about the available resources that will help you to get unstuck when using Streamlit. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. If you're starting out to learn Streamlit, the best way to learn is to actually build Streamlit applications. And to help you get started in as short amount of time as possible, we've created the 30 Days of Streamlit Learning Challenge. And you could go over to the 30days.streamlitapp.com and you could have access to the learning challenge. So for example, on day one, you're going to see that it's about setting up your own coding environment. And you could go to day two by clicking on the drop down here and you build your first app, go to day three, you learn how to use the Streamlit command. And so the learning challenge will progress slowly from very simple tasks to more complicated or intermediate topics. So in the middle of the challenge, you'll be able to build working and fun Streamlit applications. You also learn how to create apps on the cloud and deploy your app all inside the 30 days challenge. And also when you're learning, please make sure to also tag us on Twitter, on, on LinkedIn. And so learning in public is a great way for you as well for accountability. And let's take a look at resource two. So let's head over back to the Streamlit website here. And the next resource that I want to highlight is the gallery. And gallery is a great place for you to find inspiration for app creation. So here it is categorized into various topics and it's starting with the Streamlit templates. So there's a lot of templates for you to choose from. And if you're interested in using one of them, you could click on the source code here, which will bring you to the GitHub repo. And you could also clone this into your own personal GitHub account and start creating. Or if you would like to play with the app, you could click here you know, in the go to app and you get to see the demo app and play with it. You could also explore several of the available topics here for some ideas or functionalities that might be helpful for your own app creation journey. So this is a great way for you to just browse and see what available apps there are. And the third resource that I would like to highlight is the Streamlit Community Cloud. So here you could deploy your app in only a few steps. If you watch this video, you can see how easy it is to deploy a Streamlit application to the cloud. And it essentially involves linking up your GitHub account to Streamlit Cloud and then selecting a repo, the branch and the app file. And that's it. You click on deploy and it's available on the cloud. And you could share this to the community. And the fourth resource that I would like to share is the documentation. The Streamlit documentation is a great place for you to learn about all of the various APIs, Streamlit commands that there are. And there are also code examples for each of the API commands. And there's also resources for you to learn how to use the community cloud and also knowledge base, which includes tutorials, also articles on how to use Streamlit, about the Streamlit components, and also how you could install dependencies. And also there's the cheat sheet. So let's explore here. If you click on get started, it will show you how to install, how to essentially the main concepts behind building Streamlit apps, how to build a simple single page app, how to build a more complicated multi-page app, there's the API reference here, which provides you with all of the details that you really need to know to use each of the Streamlit commands. And the thumbnail image here that you see provides a conceptual look on what this particular Streamlit command is all about. So this is the title and you see that the title is bold and big here. And you also have the header, you have the subheader, which is slightly smaller than the header. You have the caption, that you could add to images as well to explain. And there's several widgets, input and output that you could leverage in your own Streamlit application. 
And if you click on one of them, it provides you what it is all about, all of the methods and options that are available in this particular command, and some coding examples for you to try out in your own application. You could copy, paste it into your own app, and give it a try. Play around with it. Modify the parameters here and see how it works. And so the best way to learn is to actually build it. Let's head over back to the main website. And another resource that I would like to highlight is the forum. You could go to the main site, click on community, and then you go to the Stromlet forum. Or the direct URL here is discuss.stromlet.io. And whenever you encounter some problems that you're stuck on and you've tried all possible means, you have already Googled, you have already searched the Stack Overflow, or you can also search the Streamlit forum here as well by clicking here and typing in your search topic. And when you're still stuck, you could read about this, how to post a question in the Streamlit forum. And it tells you exactly how to post a good question that will attract the community to help you in a quicker way. And so forum is a great way to help you get unstuck. And most likely there has already been a solution for the problem that you are encountering. And so the only way to know that is to search. And if there's not, then post a new question. The next resource that I would like to highlight is the Streamlit components. So head over back to the main website and click on components. And so here are some curated lists of available Streamlit components, which is essentially third party modules that could extend the functionality of Streamlit. For example, you could use EG Grid to add interactive data frames to your app. You could use STMO to add an interactive molecule visualization functionality. You could have a text editor using ACE. You could annotate text here as well. And there's several Streamlit components that you could potentially add to your own application. And so do check it out. And you could check out the demo. You could view the documentation for each of the component. And there's also a list to the creator of the component. And another resource that I would like to highlight is the blog. So the Streamlit blog is a great place for you to learn about using Streamlit, about various use cases that the community has created. And if you would like to contribute a blog so that others could learn how you built or leverage Streamlit to build your own application, please feel free to do so. Reach out and you could publish a blog. And aside from use cases that you could learn from other creators of Streamlit applications, you could also receive updates, announcements about Streamlit. And there's also a very cool monthly Streamlit Rewind. Let me show you. So here, there are highlights from the community on which Streamlit applications have been created. Let's have a look at the month of August here. And here we have nominated this to be the app of the month. And so you could have suggested Spotify playlists based on when you were in high school, which is pretty cool. So do check it out. And so that's all. That's all of the available Streamlit resources that I would like to recommend for you to get started in using Streamlit. If there's any additional resources that you found helpful and you would like to share with the community, Drop a comment down below. Thank you for watching until the end of the video. If you found the video helpful, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and also like the video. And if this is your first time watching the Streamlit 101 series, please make sure to also watch part one where I show you at a high level what Streamlit is all about. And also watch part two where I show you how you built your first Streamlit application. And please drop a comment down below suggesting which topic that you would like to learn more about Streamlit. And so until next time, happy Streamlitting.